Hey guys, Grant here from dropshipdownunder.com.au. Today I'm going to do a video about order fulfillment. This came from a question that was posted on one of Clint's recent videos actually, and they had a few questions about the basic process of how an order actually comes into the business and how we fulfill that order. So with that, let's dive in. Right, so this question came from uh, Matthew, and basic question was, so when an order comes into the store from your customer, we then order it from the supplier, how is this done? Is it automatic? Is it manually? How is it done? So for the most part, for at least for our stores anyway, we usually do uh, order fulfillment is fairly manual. So that involves sending the supplier an email with uh, the order number, the SKU number, what the product is, etc., etc. Uh, obviously the customer's details um, and anything else that they might need for that order. There are ways to do it automatically and you know a lot of print on demand suppliers they have uh, I guess you call it a customer porthole where you can uh, go back into the, the back end of uh, their porthole and they have API keys which is essentially just sort of like a code that you can put into your site uh, and in integrate it into your Shopify store so that those orders are pulled through into their into their system. Uh, it's not completely automatic um, for for most of them. Usually, you would have to at least press you know order a one click order. So most of that information gets pulled through all the customer data, what they've ordered, uh, everything gets pulled through. Uh, but then you just have to press the the button to actually confirm it and order it. So that that can be done, and that's really common with um, print on demand suppliers. So I hope that answers that part of it. Um, he's actually said in the question here as well, uh, how do you keep track of it all? Well, Shopify does a really good job of that. So it's, it's all pretty much in the back end there in your orders. Everything's catalogued there about what's been ordered, by who, how much it was. There's a whole range of different stuff in the back end of Shopify. So you don't really need to fill out a manual spreadsheet of, of everything you've done. Uh, keeping, tra keeping track of stuff for tax is... You know, obviously a good idea, and uh, you can you can uh, sync um, zero with with uh, Shopify now. That's a really really good app. Uh, I think it's by Bold. They have a, a an app to sync your zero um, accounting software with your Shopify store. So that's a good one. Second part of his question. It's a pretty long question, so um, I'll bear with me. Um, he wants to ask about the actual way that it's shipped and packed. So Again, this will depend on your supplier as well. So some suppliers will require you to uh, organize your own shipping, which we've done plenty of times as well. So obviously, if we're doing it that way, we'll get an order from a customer. We'll contact our shipping provider and say to them, look, this is where it's going. Um, we've got the shipping labels already at our supplier's warehouse. They're ready to go. Uh, it's going to this address, to this customer, blah, blah, blah. This is the weight, all the rest of it. So that's the way you can do it uh, directly with the supplier, uh, sorry, with the um, shipping company. If your supplier is doing the shipping for you, which is probably most common, you would be sending through uh, the information to them and they would be taking care of uh, where it's gonna go and, and actually giving it to the shipping providers to send out. Okay, so uh, next part of his question was when it comes to uh, returns and your returns policy. So any returns that you get to your store, they will be based on obviously your returns policy. So uh, make sure that you know your returns policy well. So if somebody does email you or give you a call uh, that and, and they want to return something that you you know what you've got there there in your policy, so that you're not you know caught off guard. That will then start the process of them returning the item to you, and uh, usually that that requires them to to ship the item back, obviously. And if you're in your returns policy that you say that you know, shipping is covered by the uh, the customer to actually return it, then that's always a good one to, to have in there because you don't want to get caught off, off guard and uh, have to pay that shipping to, to come back. So um, I know somebody that has actually um, copped a big hit on that one. So next part was warranties. And so like this is a little bit different, I guess, when it comes to each type of product and each supplier as well because different products have different warranties. Some don't have any. Um, so this does require a little bit of dialogue with the actual supplier as well. So 
you will probably say to them, uh, look, I've got a customer that's got uh, a warranty issue, this is what it is, and then you'll have a bit of a dialogue with them about uh, if it fits a return um, under the warranty, and then it, it, you know the return of the item and then maybe a replacement, uh, depending on if they want a replacement or they want a refund um, based on that warranty issue, that um, that can then be organized through, through the, the supplier. Uh, and you would obviously engage the supplier to to work out that issue and then have the customer uh, get their return or their 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 um, refund. Next one was he wanted to know about keeping customers happy. Now, this is a really big one. We've spoken about this before. Clint and I have touched on this many times. Uh, I always like to do um, thank you videos, uh, which I've spoken about before. Retarget people in Facebook that are my customers literally just targeting with a thank you video not not trying to sell them anything not trying to upsell them or anything like that it's literally just a thank you for purchasing and we, we really uh, appreciate having a business so that's basically that one uh, but obviously you can go into doing emails um, sending out thank you emails for uh, purchasing your item giving them discount codes etc like that maybe bonuses even um, even, even putting you know, little extras into the package that they already have coming and we've done that before with one of our, one of our suppliers. We sent a box full of, um, you know, really cheap smaller items, but uh, they they complemented the main item, and we got our supplier to to, you know, put one of those little items in, just a nice little surprise, a little extra. Uh, it didn't cost us hardly anything extra, but when it gets when it, when the customer gets to unbox everything and they see that little extra in there and a thank you note. Um, you know, some suppliers will do it, some won't, but when the customer opens it, they're very appreciative of it. So, okay. I know that was a very, very uh, high level overview of all of that and it could be probably four videos in one but uh, I hope you got some value out of that and uh, obviously if you did, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to our videos um, and as always, if you want to learn dropshipping yourself, head over to dropshipdownunder.com.au. Cheers guys.